Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I have started vlogging at the very beginning of brutal Russian invasion to Ukraine. And if you support my country and want to witness our victory, let's do it together on my channel. So please subscribe if you are with us. And today I actually want to speak about our future victory and it is closely connected to the future of Russia. Of course, I want this moment to come when we have nothing to do with Russia, we simply forget about its existence, but perhaps it is impossible. All psychologists, all people will tell you that if you want something to happen, you have to imagine this thing, you have to visualize it, you have to develop consciously and subconsciously some plans of how to achieve that. So Ukrainian victory is the saying that we all think about and we often ask questions. What is Ukrainian victory? How would you describe what is that victory? Many people advise us to negotiate. Others advise us to fight until Russia is totally erased from uh, the planet. Both variants, negotiations with Russians who never follow the things they promise, and like total destruction of the largest country in the world are impossible. That's why I actually wonder why so many beautiful people who are into the future of Ukraine, the future of Europe and the future of world do not discuss what is this victory? How is it going to look? What are we trying to achieve? And when is that moment when all of us are satisfied except Russians and Putin, of course. So in case with Ukraine, I think it is more or less vivid. We want to end this war. We want to return back all of our territories and to start developing, rebuilding and changing like uh, all that uh, Russians spoiled to us with the help of Russian reparations. We also want to become members of the European Union and NATO. We speak about that and one part of this war is because of our desire to join the Western world. So this is how we see our life after victory. But what will happen to Russia after we win? And no one is talking about that seriously. People have got used to this old Russia that change regimes, change uh, dictators, but nothing really changes in its attitude towards its neighbors, peace, freedom and democracy. And recently I have come across one article uh, written by a Ukrainian author, Valery Pekar, that I liked a lot and I want to summarize it because he did it pretty well. And he enumerates this possible scenarios that you can come across in various media conversations and the majority of them are unrealistic. For example, after our victory, we don't care what is going on in Russia. It's impossible because something will be boiling and uh, one bad day they will decide to invade us, for example, once again. <clears throat> if we want to let them go and do whatever they want, well, history demonstrates that typically they only want bad things uh, to do. Kill everyone in Russia. Well, we are not uh, planning to do that because that's 140 million people with children, civilians. First, it's impossible. Second, it's immoral. And uh, okay, then another option that I like, let them kill each other. And sometimes it looks very realistic that if Russia loses this war and we do everything for it to lose this war, civil war may start inside Russia and actually Russian partisans who already demonstrate their uh, disagreement with Putin's regime and a passive Russian population do some things in Belgorod, in Krasnodar and they plan to attack Moscow one beautiful day. But <clears throat> once again it will be dangerous and for us too because you know when a huge 100 million country is boiling with civil war and Russians are brutal, Russians are miserable, Russians are not humane, it may result in uh, bad things uh, for those who are close to them. And once again, these are us. Occupy Russia. 
Uh, like, I don't know if you've seen that beautiful illustration at the beginning of this war, really big country of Russia, the largest country in the world, and Ukraine. That is big, but not that big, trying to stop that evil. So, not very likely that even together with the European Union allies, we will have enough resources to control occupied Russian territories somewhere in Siberia, or elsewhere, where there are no roads, no connections, and possibly no internet. Then, uh, destroy Moscow and forget about it. Once again, Moscow is just one city, and there are lots and lots of Russian chauvinists and people who come to kill Ukrainians from various parts of big Russia. And there are precedents when, for example, Napoleon burned Moscow and nothing happened. Russians got used to that, they can burn their cities even by themselves, they can destroy them, then return and live in miserable conditions for the next couple of centuries. So this does not give us anything. And perhaps the most utopian or anti-utopian, like the least realistic scenario out of all that I have just enumerated, is democracy in Russia, that with the help of uh, us and you, one day Russians will start developing democracy. But let's be realistic. It's very important, especially if we deal with such serious problems as, you know, war. Um, during the last centuries, they did not have even a short spell of a successful democratic regime. All the Western countries, which Russia hates so hard, actually loved and wanted to support it after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 90s, in the beginning of 2000s. They were doing everything to integrate Russia into global um, trade, global culture, global security, but they failed. And um, I think that those who are deep into Russian psychology, Russian philosophy, realize that democracy is just not their style of living. <clears throat> That's why the most realistic scenario that I often speak about, and this beautiful author of the article, Valery Pekar states, is the fall of Russia and many new republics that appear. But he has some arguments that I did not mention previously. And uh, these are the facts that we don't know or underestimate when we speak about this diversity of Russia that is seriously suppressed. Russia tries to describe itself as a very monolithic, mononational country uh, where Russians are everywhere. But in reality, even according to Putin's surveys, one third of its population is non-Russian. But we can multiply that by 10. Many, many people who are not Russian, who do not share Russian values, who speak different languages in their homes, even though they don't have normal opportunities to learn them at schools, but they preserve cultural heritage, they have different religious practices, they mock Russians, they uh, hate them for um, different laws that Russia enforces to uh, suppress uh, national identities. But they exist because no plague, no atomic bombs were exploding. And even if these people, because of this uh, regime, identify themselves as Russian or say that they are Russian because they are Russian speaking, they choose this option, not Russian, but Russian speaking, uh, they are not. And uh, in Russia, they have 21 republics. And out of these 21 republics, in 15, the dominant uh, population is not Russian. And I think that if they have a chance to uh, revive their language, their culture, feel respect from uh, neighbors, feel support from the world and world democracies, they will only be happy to return to their cultural heritage. And it is still possible, once again, because they are not dead. In 200 years, they will be, perhaps, but at this moment, uh, they could not have disappeared forever. 
They simply follow Russian pressure and Russian fashion to say they are Russian, but they are not. And I have seen, by the way, lots of interviews, especially in the Caucasian mountains, for example, or in Siberia, where girls say, I don't want to marry Russian because I'm not Russian. And she does not say her her identity. She does not name to what culture she belongs, but she says, no, no, I'm not Russian. So there are chances. And uh, we may say that all of these cultures are extremely uh, Russified, but Ukraine was very Russified. And look at us now. The Baltic countries, Latvia, was very Russified. And now this is a totally independent, sovereign, free country with its own historical and cultural heritage. And this is beautiful because the more cultures, the more languages we are able to preserve, the richer our world is. So actually, when we stop Russia from being this bad, hungry, non-caring empire over lots of beautiful uh, republics, we will get like better we will get more cultures more languages more uh countries that might become democracies if we support them properly and uh nuclear weapons that is another aspect that people are often afraid of but come on we have that experience with soviet union collapse and there are different uh agreements that can be signed Moreover, we can learn on our mistakes and uh, write them differently. Um, I don't think that these republics will start shooting nuclear weapons on each other because they've got them. No, it's not likely. It's more likely that Putin will start using nuclear weapons than these new countries that will appear. So more and more often, I think that we should use this popular phrase that often appears on slogans that we are fighting for ours and for yours freedom and the intention of my today's video and if you support it please share also i'm looking for those who can help me with quora and uh, reddit because they are really good platforms to inform people about the situation in ukraine so if you agree please share because i think that somehow we forget talking about the future talking about the future of Russia and sadly our future and I don't mean only Ukrainian global future depends on what happens to Russia after we win what kind of reforms changes measures will be applied to its populations and how will it change because it goes without saying that it should change like tremendously Thank you so much for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. Check our shop there. We have lots of beautiful t-shirts that are perfect conversation starters. But most importantly, thank you for the support that you demonstrate to Ukraine. And together we will win. Slava Ukraini!